Let's take that. Is that the right? Um, so we'll go over um, announcements for the month. Um, going over the financials for Hacker Dojo. Quick update on uh, membership and then overall updates for the organization. Upcoming um, things that we have in the works, um, projects we've been working on, things like that. Uh, I like to keep a pretty open forum. So if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand and let me know. If there's anyone who's following along on the Google Meet, I'd appreciate also a hand up if someone asks a question there. Um, I don't expect too many people on there, um, but if you can um, keep an eye on that for me, I would appreciate it. Um, at any point, we try to be tra pretty transparent, so if there's anything that doesn't make sense or you have questions about, always feel free to ask. Um, if you want to come up and chat afterwards, uh, we are going to be doing a barbecue from 6 to 7 this evening um, for an additional Q&A session. Um, and for anyone who isn't able to make this session, they'll be able to review this um, online after we post it and come with any questions that they may have. So without further ado, we will get started. Uh, first off, we have some upcoming events that I want to make sure everyone is aware of. Um, the biggest one is this 14th, um, two days from now, MongoDB is hosting a generative AI hackathon here. Um, the co-working space and the classroom will not be available um, for general working. It's going to take up both spaces. We're expecting between 75 and 100 people for that. It's going to be a great event. We'd love for you to participate, but we want to let everyone know these two spaces are going to be reserved for that. Um, both of the conference rooms, Electronics Lab and Laser Lab will be available for people who want to work. We'll try and get those cleaned up and have some uh, ready workstations um, for anyone who needs a space um, for that day. It is an all day event, um, so I think it's 12 hours long in total. Should be a really fun event. Um, they are going to be doing a lot of uh, videography, photos, um, things like that. So please do come out, support uh, MongoDB, support Hacker Dojo help make this a great event. You can sign up for that and get more information on that on our meetup. Um, following on to that immediately, the next day um, is Open Sauce up in San Francisco. We're currently slated to take a small team of volunteers up there for that. Um, because of how much we have going on this week, we are looking, um, and that Open Sauce was put together a little bit last minute, we are looking at if it's the best use of our time to go up there or not. But if you are interested in going to Open Sauce or displaying there, uh, let me know. We could use some additional volunteer help um, if we decide that we want to go forward with it. We're going to meet and chat about that right after this um, to see what we want to do. Um, and then June 21st, we have our Grill and Chill here. That's a Friday evening. Um, opportunity to come out and uh, we'll be firing up the barbecue, have vegan, vegetarian, and meat eater options. Um, so please do come out, join. Um, this is just a chance to come together as a community, cook some food, um, and chat and hang out and have a good time. Um, and then our next members meeting is going to be July 10th. Um, we are getting onto the schedule of doing this the second Wednesday of every month. Um, so we are divorcing this a little bit from the board meetings. Um, so occasionally you guys will get information before the board does, um, but we try to have that happen as well, as regularly as possible. Um, but so you can put on your calendar if you're interested, uh, July 10th is going to be the next one. Um, for those of you who uh, are looking for ways to help Hacker Dojo um, continue to exist as an organization, we've got a lot of different um, options. If you're interested in volunteering, we've had some volunteers step forward and help with everything from hanging TVs back up after we painted to moving things around, doing cleaning. Um, and of course, for our volunteer days, um, we've been making some great um, progress, getting some of the area repainted, looking really um, spruced up. Um, and so really appreciate all the volunteers who contribute that way. Um, the other way that you can help, one of the other ways you can help is by posting and sharing our events. Um, this is a way that you can really amplify the reach that we have as an organization is by sharing, you know, anytime that you're interested in an event or you see something that you think your friends might be interested in, please do share that event out um, on Facebook or Instagram, um, Twitter, X, whatever it may be. Um, that really helps broaden our reach as an organization and brings in new members all the time. Um, and then if you want to help host a meetup, we have a, a pretty strong slate of meetups going on all the time, but we're always happy to have more. Um, so if there's something that you're interested in helping lead, 
Um, you don't necessarily have to be a content expert in it. Um, a lot of the people who lead meetups um, are not necessarily the person who is delivering necessarily you know, a teaching style meetup. A lot of times it's getting together for discussions, working together. So if you want to learn more about a particular topic, hosting a meetup is a great way to bring a lot of people together um, who are also interested in a particular topic. Um, and then as always, donations really help us as an organization. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. We are set up to take everything from cryptocurrency to cash and everything in between. Um, so we really, really appreciate donors of all sizes, whether it's a dollar um, or in April, we had a $35,000 um, half Bitcoin donation. Um, so we really, really appreciate all the um, members and donors who have helped keep us afloat, um, particularly as we re relaunched out of COVID and have been regrowing the organization um, over the last year. Those donations help us continue to keep the doors open, lights on, internet fast, um, and have really brought us to this point where we have some actual good financial news, um, but we have a long way to go before we're back to being relatively comfortable with our finances, um, but at least we're turning in the right, right direction. Um, and a lot of you have already heard us talk about wanting to um, move to a larger space. Um, anytime you move an organization, it is a very, very costly endeavor. So we need to build up our financial reserves to be able to accomplish that. Um, and that is something that we are anticipating doing, would like to do in the next year, um, because as you're seeing with all the events that we're hosting, we are running out of room. Um, and we wanna make sure that we can host a hackathon and have co-working space um, available at the same time. So we're working actively to find a larger location right now. But to do that, we have to have um, a lot more money in the bank to be able to afford a uh, move like that. Any questions about the events coming up? If there's a lot more, please do follow our meetup. Um, and we're going to be adding in Luma um, and posting our events there as well, for those of you who are, new, are familiar with that newer platform. <laughs> All right, so um, getting into the finances, uh, this is our profit and loss from May. May ended up being setting aside donations because April was a great month for that with the Bitcoin, half Bitcoin that came in. Setting aside donations, May was actually our best revenue uh, month in the last year, um, surpassed April by about $400. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, at the bottom though, it looks like we have a net income of negative 3,000. Uh, there's a little bit of information. Uh, we did pay rent twice this month because I was out of town the first and second with no internet. So I paid it a couple days early before I was heading out of town. So it landed on our May statement rather than our June. Um, so that's an extra $16,000 that would normally be in this statement. That isn't. Um, so we had a pretty strong net positive um, in May. Um, and that was helped by the payment for the MongoDB hackathon that we are hosting on Friday. Um, the reason we host all these hackathons, we know that it can be disruptive to people who are working here. Uh, this is a great way that companies support Hacker Dojo. Not only does it bring a lot of excitement in, but the financials of hosting a hackathon and renting out this space here as an event space uh, really helps us uh, financially as an organization. Uh, so MongoDB uh, is paying about $6,000 for the use for the day. Um, so it's not something that we take on lightly. We don't just be like, oh yeah, whoever can use the space because we know how disruptive it is to members. Um, but for events like this, we know that it brings a lot of energy and excitement to the place and helps us financially as an organization. Um, so that's something that um, also landed in May. And then the summit um, program that we've been doing for the last nine months, the last check from that also landed in May. Um, so that helped a lot as well. So May was a really strong revenue month um, overall, in spite of what the PL says because of the um, double rent payment. Um, but I want to put a caveat on that, which we'll discuss in a couple of slides, in that um, finances are very, very cyclical. They go up and down, up and down over time. We, um, that payment from Summit is the last one that we'll be seeing until that program is renewed in and restarts in October. So instead of getting $20,000 every couple of months as we have been, that is several months that we are going to have to live through where we don't have that revenue coming in. So that's one of the ways that donations and building up a larger financial reserve really helps us out is allows us to weather those cyclical 
the cyclical nature of um, businesses like this when you know we have revenue coming in or we have a slow month where we're not hosting a big hackathon things like that we want to make sure that we're um, really really strong financially so that that isn't something that stresses us as an organization any questions about this all right No questions online, okay. Those of you who are online, am I actually screen sharing? I am not. All right, apologies to those of you who are online. All right, um, overall membership has remained relatively flat. Um, we do have some good indicators for June, but over the last year, you can see um, our membership has been very, very flat. This is um, a lot of different um, factors playing into this. A lot of people have been struggling financially in Silicon Valley. Um, cost of living and recent layoffs have really put a lot of pressure on people to examine their finances closely. And often memberships and things like that at places like Hacker Dojo are once again cut. Um, and so that can be really challenging as an organization that is largely supported through memberships. Um, and this is, again, emphasizing, you know, spread the word as much as you can. Bring members in, bring your friends in. Um, they will bring additional people in as well. You don't have to do the hard sell of, hey, you need to join this organization. Just come and have a good time and we'll sell the organization uh, as a community uh, to them. And if they want to support us, um, they will. Um, so membership has been flat. Um, we are on pace for um, growing in May or um, in June. Uh, May we ticked up just a little bit. So we are hoping that we normally see a bump um, up in membership at the beginning of summer as students come home um, from college or it gets hot and people are tired of working in their um, houses without AC. So we do typically see a beginning of summer bump. So we are um, hoping that June is a better month for growth. Um, but again, we just need help spreading the word about Hacker Dojo. Um, and we have flyers that you can go out and post at the local coffee shops that you frequent, um, share about on um, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever it may be. Um, and when you come here, feel free to tag yourself and check in and just be like, hey, I'm at Hacker Dojo. Your friends, family, coworkers, whoever it may be, will see that. Um, and it helps drive foot traffic here as people are like, oh, what's Hacker Dojo? Um, or they'll find out that we have actually reopened. Um, there's still a lot of people who don't know that Hacker Dojo is back in Mountain View. Um, so please do make sure that you're being also a visible part of the organization. It does help us a lot. Um, on the revenue side, um, as I mentioned before, this was the best revenue month in the last year um, in May, with the caveat being excluding that Bitcoin donation. So excluding cryptocurrency, um, May edged out April just barely. So having two really strong back-to-back -back months is a great indicator going into summer. Um, that is driven a lot of that um, by member, um, by event revenue is one of the biggest um, changes from previous months. Um, our membership revenue has been relatively flat because again, membership has been flat. Um, the other thing that we did, um, these charts are gonna change as we get some better tracking metrics. Um, we've shifted our event billing out of Nexodus. Um, how many of you absolutely love your member portals? Anyone? No? Okay. <laughs> Not terribly surprised. Uh, we don't particularly like Nexodus as a system. It's a little bit clunky to use. Um, moving it out of Nexodus is actually going to save us between uh, 1 and 3% in fees. And when we're hosting events on a regular basis that are you know, five to $6,000, that one to 3% adds up pretty quickly. So we moved that um, out of Nexus and into QuickBooks. So you will see, um, as is shown here, a drop off in the revenue charting that's coming out of Nexus um, in future months. And that's just reflecting that we've pulled that revenue out of, um, out of the normal reporting for Nexus. Any questions? No questions online? All right. All right, so overall financial uh, summary, um, the chart that I shared here, this is our uh, cash on hand. 
Um, so this really reflects a lot of the growth that we've had over the last few months. We've had a really strong start to the year. Um, you can see that December, January, February, we were really struggling as an organization, um, building up our cash reserves. We were really living you know, almost uh, day to day, week to week. Um, and we were really fortunate that our landlord was willing to be a little bit flexible for us, with us. Um, and then the large spike that came at the end of March, beginning of April, um, right here, that reflects the donation um, that we received at that time. And that allowed us to really get current on all of um, our rent bills and have a little bit extra stored away that allowed us to start investing a little bit more towards the future. Um, and then you can see we've had really steady growth from there. It's one of the old adages, you know, it takes money to make money. Um, not having enough in reserve to really invest in the future of Hacker Dojo was really challenging um, from an organizational standpoint. So having a little bit more flexibility now, uh, we're able to see some really consistent growth, do a little bit more outreach, advertising, um, and now we're getting back into the event cycle that historically has brought a lot of revenue into Hacker Dojo. Um, so I want to um, also extend some appreciation to Tiana, who's really helped um, organize and set up a lot of the events and helped them run smoothly. So thank you, round of applause for her. Um, those, that revenue really does help us tremendously as an organization. Um, so you know, again, we don't take those events on lightly as an organization, um, particularly when we know that it might be disruptive to all of our members um, who are paying you know, month in, month out, and you know, being here every day. Um, we really wanna make sure that we're respecting and all of you and keeping a space that is welcoming, friendly, and accessible for you. Um, but it's also the realities of surviving in Silicon Valley. It's challenging, and you know, we wanna make sure that we're here as an organization, even if we have some occasional disruptions. Um, so overall, our net um, net positive for um, 2024 to date is about forty thousand um, dollars. So we've been uh, forty to fifty thousand dollars. So it's been a really really strong um, start to the year. We do want to continue that um, through summer. We have some initiatives that we are working on that we're hoping will bring in some additional revenue. Um, and you know, overall, it's been a really really good year. Um, the, um, some of the other positives coming up, uh, we've talked a lot about Summit over the last nine months. Uh, we wrapped that program up last month, and we're talking about what we're going to do for the coming school year. And the good news is Summit is interested in expanding us to a fourth school. We did three this year, so adding an additional, um, an additional school and an additional class. Uh, so we are anticipating doing cybersecurity um, as a new class for high school students um, for Summit Public Charter and they're pretty excited about that. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in helping develop some curriculum for and helping develop some challenges that, uh, for high schoolers who are interested in getting into cybersecurity, uh, reach out to me and let me know. This is a great, great program that um, we launched this past year and has been both a really good revenue driver for Hacker Dojo, but a really great experience for the students who've taken this program. Uh, we did entrepreneurship, robotics, and programming this year. Um, and we're gonna step away from the entrepreneurship. It was a little bit challenging for the high school students to engage in that um, in a really meaningful way, um, but we're gonna do, um, lean further into the robotics and the programming and add in some maker classes on 3D design, utilizing 3D printers, laser cutters, things like that. Um, so we're really excited about that program for next year, um, but that revenue won't be coming back until October. Um, end of October, beginning of November will be the first month that we um, that we have that revenue coming back in. Um, and what that means is that we do expect over the summer that we will likely see a couple of months where we have actual operational losses. Um, and this is where having that um, a strong bank balance really helps us as an organization when we don't have to worry about three or four months where we might be losing might be you know $5,000, $6,000 in the red. Um, as long as we have enough reserves, we know that we've got programs locked in for the fall. We know that we'll survive to that. We don't have to worry too much as an organization uh, because we know what that plan looks like going forward. That's very, very typical in the hackerspace and makerspace world. Um, in general, most hackerspace and makerspaces make a fair amount of money during the summer um, because they do a lot of youth education programs. We don't do many of those um, 
in the traditional sense held in the space here. We are going to have a few this summer. Um, and that will hopefully help offset some of those later months and continue our um, strong positive growth. Um, but we also, again, are trying to balance needs of membership um, with the needs of the organization for financial viability and sustainability. Um, so we're always looking for ways we can handle that creatively without impacting uh, the membership in a major way. Um, and then um, one of the other programs we're working on, um, we're finalizing right now um, a program with Early Bright, which is a educational company in Nigeria. They are bringing 15 Nigerian high school students to Silicon Valley for two weeks to kind of experience what the culture and area is like. Uh, we're going to be pairing them with 15 high school students from our local area, doing a three-day hackathon, um, and then some events in the uh, local area, touring Google, um, probably either Gaddick or Waymo, um, maybe NVIDIA if we can get it to get them to uh, let us in there. Uh, but we'll be doing some work with these students um, in the middle of August. So that's another one of the programs we have um, on the horizon. Um, so just getting that on everyone's board um, far in advance, the second full week of August, the classroom will probably be pretty fully booked during the day hours. So just a heads up far in advance um, so no one's caught by surprise. All right, any questions? I don't know who the grumpy old man is. All right, uh, next slide. Uh, so a couple of updates. Um, this past weekend, we finished the majority of the repainting that we plan to do. We do have a couple more spots that we want to um, go in and change up. Um, the bathrooms um, and the laser lab are the three primary ones that we have some more work to do. But the main space we're basically done at this um, at this point. Um, I want to extend a lot of appreciation to Emily who has helped lead a lot of these painting efforts um, and in particular spent a lot of time with me um, on the wall over Brooklyn right up here. Um, so we had been struggling to find a way to transition between the green that the murals are painted on and the gray that we're um, transitioning to. Um, and so this is an idea that I came up with um, a couple months back and we we're finally able to execute this pixelation pattern um, to kind of create a digital uh, transition between the two. Um, so we're pretty happy with how it looks. We hope you guys are too. Um, and we're going to continue. Um, also the hive at some point, we want to get that repainted, I think. Um, but that's pretty much it for the painting. We do have some other major upgrades in the works that we are uh, currently planning around and would love some help. Um, and this is another way, you know, again, another area that volunteers can be involved, but also donations really help with. Um, we want to fix up the cafe area up front. Um, we have a full size refrigerator that we're going to bring in. Um, but before we do that, we have to relocate the coffee bar um, and the tea section along the wall there. So we'll be bringing in some new tables, replacing the countertops, bringing in the fridge there. Um, but again, we're balancing finances right now. So if you are interested in donating to support that, um, we would love to have your support. We're also going to be replacing some of the flooring over in that area um, and doing a, um, a composite vinyl uh, flooring that will be a little bit uh, smoother to walk on, easier to clean, and really spruce up the look um, a little bit. Um, so those are um, you know, in the works for hopefully the next couple of weeks. Um, we're hoping that we're going to get the tea area moved and reorganized this week before the um, hackathon. So if you're interested in helping out with that, please do let us know. Um, mentioned before, we're working on expanding the summit program um, to four programs and four schools. Uh, so that um, is pretty exciting that they you know, continue to want to work with us. Um, and that really speaks to the effort um, and dedication that our instructors put into that. Uh, Nicole Borgard, who many of you know through either 3D printing or lasers or her many, many years here at Hacker Dojo, um, was one of our primary instructors, Eva Carinder, um, who you've probably seen either supporting Star Wars gear here or working you know, with, with LEGO Robotics. She's our other primary instructor for those programs, and they've both been phenomenal to work with. I really appreciate their flexibility um, and everything they brought to those programs. Um, and then um, I mentioned at the very beginning, we're still looking for a new space. We don't have an update from Google. Um, Google has, um, for those of you that don't know, we've been talking with Google about utilizing one of their properties in the area that they've already purchased, but have a longer development timeline. 
um, then they want to leave a building vacant for us. That's typically a five to 10 year time span. Um, I've worked with Google in the past for, um, for this use, um, and it usually works out really, really well for the organizations that are able to benefit from that. Um, but obviously Google is going through a lot of reorganization in their long-term plans. So once those get kind of reorged and reset up, uh, they'll be circling back around with some potential properties for us to look at. Uh, but that conversation is um, is ongoing. We just don't have a exciting update for anyone yet. Um, and then we're talking with CloudStrike. Um, CloudStrike sponsored um, an event here um, a couple of about a month and a half ago, a month ago. Um, and we've been talking with them about uh, sponsoring additional cybersecurity events here at Hacker Dojo. Um, so if you're interested in helping lead uh, cybersecurity events um, across a pretty wide range of interests, uh, we'd love to talk to talk with you about some of the programs that we would like to offer um, over the next couple of months. Um, and then the last final point is it's been a year since I joined Hacker Dojo. Um, as of next week, it's been a wild, wild ride. We've survived. Um, and I really want to extend my personal appreciation for everyone here that has been so welcoming and such a great part of the community. Um, I wasn't quite sure what it'd be like coming into a new organization. Um, that was a little bit outside of my comfort zone um, as far as you know, the level of technical expertise that is in this room far exceeds my level of technical expertise. Um, but everyone has been incredibly helpful and incredibly kind and gracious. And um, so thank you to all of you for making it a really great year. Um, I'm excited that we survived and are trying to you know, rebuild this organization and move in the right direction. Um, but mostly thank you to all of you for being here, participating, you know, showing up with a smile every day, um, and you know, helping keep Hacker Dojo the um, wonderful community that it is. All right, um, and obviously I copied that board slides from last night. Um, so any questions um, from all of you guys? Anything that you guys want to see or want prioritized over the next couple months, couple years? Yeah. Uh, better, larger bathroom mats for when we have larger crowds. Better, larger bathroom mats? For the, for the heroes. Oh, okay. Noted. More protection. Sure. Especially when we got 200 people here. We're, we're hopefully not going to have 200 people here. But um, yeah, absolutely. We'll take a look at that. Um, I'll see what I can find. And yeah, yes. Yeah, for the, uh, so you mentioned about uh, the electronic room, you know, kind of cleaning up the So, uh, I was wondering, like, if we're kind of understand it as a common area. In other words, you bring the project in for that day, you work on it, and you clean it up the Yeah, so the question is, um, should we consider the um, electronics lab as a common area where you bring your project, work on it, and then clean up at the end? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, and that's true of every space here that isn't a dedicated desk. The reason we have the dedicated desk is for people who want to set up more longer term projects, leave things overnight. Everywhere else in the space is a common space. We want to make sure that you know you may be working on a project and you know elbow deep in you know anything from you know robotics to laser cutting, whatever it may be. Um, but there's someone else that may be coming in right behind you that also needs to be elbow deep in a project. And if that space isn't cleaned up and left in a good state for them, they're the ones who have to clean up after you. And that's not being a good um, member of the community. And that really applies uh, across the entire uh, space. Um, don't leave, um, please don't leave um, any dishes in the sink. The moment that one dish gets left in the sink, everyone is like, oh, we leave dishes in the sink. And suddenly those dishes multiply like triples. Um, and we suddenly have six um, cups in the sink instead of one. Um, please either put it into the dishwasher or hand wash it, put it on the dryer there. Um, and that's a way that we, as a, as a community, can help keep the space looking really, really clean. Electronics lab tables, um, whatever it may be, wherever you're working, please make sure that you're cleaning up after yourself when you're, you know, before you leave. Even if you're leaving for a couple of hours and planning on coming back, you know, someone else may need that table in that intervening couple of hours. We want to make sure that we're treating each other you know, as equitably as we can and making sure that that space is available for everyone. Yeah. yeah two more things. Uh, heating in the electronics lab, or, you know, heating in these other rooms, and then 
third thing is a lot of people will go in there for a quiet area mm -hmm. and have a lot of monitors set up and all this kind of thing. So is it is it an instance where if you're in there just like using it as a quiet space and someone comes in and does a project and makes a lot of noise, you know, how would you handle it? Uh, that's, so the question is, you know, someone using it as a quiet space, someone comes in and needs to make a lot of noise. Um, the answer is, you know, we work together on that as a community. Um, the person who's coming in, if they see someone's in a meeting, you know, just check in real quick back, hey, you know, I have a project that I need to work on in here. What's your time frame for, you know, being done with this? We have two conference rooms that are available for reservation, but as the community grows, those are increasingly in demand. We don't always have a, another quiet space for someone that's in the middle of an air view. Um, so this is an area where you know we try to work together as a community, even if it sometimes is personally inconveniencing a little bit. Um, check in, see how that person, um, see how long their meeting is going to be. But they don't have a like a reserved right to say you can't make noise in the electronics lab. Um, that's not them being a good community member towards you as well when you have a project that you're working on. So that's where communication and asking questions and you know just working together to find a equitable solution that gets both people access to the resources they need. That's the best approach. Um, but they aren't meant to be dedicated quiet spaces for like one person to dominate. Yeah. yeah kind of what I meant was not, not just an interview where someone will go in there and set up their PC work there as a quiet and and I'm you know as long as that isn't interfering with every you know as long as there's a reason we have three you know workstations available as long as one of those workstations is available um, and they aren't impeding other people from using the space I don't particularly have an issue with it um, but generally you know if you need if you need a longer term setup like that I definitely recommend uh, we do have a couple of hive desks available so if you are interested in a longer term you don't have to tear things down at the end of the day. Um, want to get a dedicated desk, we do have a couple of those available right now. Um, but yeah, in general, you know, we don't we don't want to be policing what people are working on in the electronics lab. I hope that in good faith, people working on the electronics lab are typically needing to use that space versus being out here instead of it just being, you know, the most convenient spot. Um, but it is one of the places where we do have dual monitors set up. So sometimes people want to go in there and use the dual monitors for that. Um, but again, you know, make sure that, that space is available for people who, you know, might be working on other projects in there rather than just using it as a convenient quiet workspace. Yeah, the last one would be food in the electronics lab. Yeah, no, no food. Yeah, no food in the electronics lab, um, and no food in the laser lab. And um, really, really make sure that if you take food into either one of the conference rooms, you clean up after yourselves. Um, you know, always whenever you're leaving a space, um, one of the biggest things you can do to help keep the place clean is just clean up after yourself. Push the chairs back in when you're done. Um, so if you get up, you're cleaning up your space, the last thing you do is you push that chair back in. It makes a huge, huge difference coming in and seeing all the chairs lined up and just like how professional the place looks versus having the chairs kind of just you know chaotically around. Um, so you'll see me come through periodically and straighten up all the chairs. Um, just because we have a lot of people who do walk-in tours um, and their first impression walk into the space, is all of you working and how accessible the rest of the space looks. So having you know all the chairs neatly pushed in, people working away um, in the rest of the space, that gives a very, very different air and um, vibe that um, people are more likely to sign up as members if they see the space maintained in that way because they know that each of you cares about the space. Um, and it's really, really easy to walk away and forget to push in your chair. Um, but that's something that you know if you just Kind of like getting that habit as you're walking through the space. If you see an unoccupied chair just kind of hanging out in the middle of the space, just push it back in. It really does help the space look a little bit cleaner, a little bit better. Um, and you know, really appreciate um, bringing up those points on just like overall cleanliness. Um, we don't have a lot of space, so anytime that anything is out of place or left out, um, it has an outsized impact. When we have a larger footprint and a much larger space, that won't be as big of an impact to us as a community, um, but definitely right now, that's something that we want to be watching uh, pretty closely. Any other questions? All right, well, I hope you guys will join us this evening. Um, we'll be barbecuing, um, probably start a little bit early because it's nice and warm outside. 
Uh, so we'll probably fire up the grill around 5, 5.30. Um, and definitely have things coming off the grill between 6 and 7. So hope to see you all tonight. Um, and again, thank you very much. Um, and look forward to another great year at Hacker Dojo.